Okay, class, today we're in section 3.4, find slope and rate of change. 3.4, find slope and rate of change. Before, you graph the linear equations. Now, you will find the slope of a line and interpret slope as a rate of change. Key vocabulary, slope, rate of change. The slope of a non-vertical line is the ratio of the vertical change, the rise, to the horizontal change, the run, between any two points on the line. The slope of a line is represented by the letter M. Once again, the slope of a non-vertical line is the ratio of the vertical change, the rise, to the horizontal change, the run, between any two points on the line. The slope of a line is represented by the letter M. Key, key concept, finding the slope of a line, words. The slope M of the non-vertical line passing through two points, X sub one, Y sub one, and X sub two, Y sub two, is the ratio of the rise, change in the Y, to the run, change in X. In other words, slope is equal to the rise over the run, or slope is equal to rise divided by run, which means the change in y and the change in x. Slope is equal to rise over run, and that equals the change in the y values divided by the change in the x values. Using symbols, it will look like this. M, that stands for slope. Rise, those are your y values. Run, those are your x ray. Rise, that means that y goes up and down. It rises. X, that's your run. That means you can walk on it or you can run on it. If this line were a sidewalk, you can walk or run on it. So once again, rise over the run. That's how it looks in the symbols. Now you read this as y sub s u b, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And in case you're wondering, sub is short for subscript. That means below, as opposed to superscript, which you would normally see as so. Um, and this is like old school terminology. So when you see y squared, that says y superscript 2, means above. All right, when you see y below, you read that as y subscript. So y sub two, sub is short for subscript. Okay, y squared, y sub two, two completely different meanings. So make sure you get that in your head. And once again, it is sub as you be, short for subscript. Okay, now when you look at the graph, the way you would see slope is, you have two points, point here and a point there. This point is called x sub 1, y sub 1. This is x sub 2, y sub 2. Now, you compute the rise. So this is the rise and the run. Rise over run. Rise over run. Rise over run. Now, you can go backwards, but you still got to say the same thing. This is the run and this is the rise. But when you write it, the rise will go on top and the run will go on the bottom. Example one, find a positive slope. Find the slope of the line shown. Let x1, y1 equal negative 4, 2. So that's negative 4, 2. And x2, y2, that's going to equal to 2 and 6. Okay, so our formula is, and you must commit this to memory, it will not be given to you on the ELC. So, so this formula must be committed to memory. M slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So now all you do now is plug in. Okay, now what I do so I don't get confused, I write my formula down. y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And then I label my points. So I put them in the exact right spot. So 
Here, I put x of 1 above that negative 4, y sub 1 above that 2, x sub 2 above that 2, and y sub 2 above that 6. That way, I don't get confused. So now, what is my y sub 2 value? That's 6. That goes right there. What is my y sub 1 value? That's 2. That goes right there. What is my x sub 2 value? That is 2. That goes right there. What is my x sub 1 value? That's that negative 4. It goes right there. See, I don't get confused because I label. And a little extra, a little extra work saves you a lot of trouble in terms of getting problems right and problems wrong. All right, now we do the simple math. What is 6 minus 2? 6 minus 2 is 4. What is 2 minus a negative 4? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's really 2 plus 4. And what's 2 plus 4? That's going to be 6. Now I'm going to reduce the 4 over 6 by 2. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 goes into 6 three times. And that's how they came out with 4 over 6 is equal to 2 over 3. Once again, 6 minus 2, 4. A negative times a negative, positive. So it's really 2 plus 4, so that's 6. Also remember, we labeled our points. We labeled our points. Keep everything neat and organized. Less chance of making a mistake. X of 1, Y of 1. X of 2, Y of 2. Example 2. Find a negative slope. Find a negative slope. Find the slope of, a line, of the line shown. All right, so once again, they give us our line, and they give us a point here and a point there. Here we got 3 and 5, and here we got 6 and negative 1. Let x of 1 be 3 and 5. So we're saying let that be x of 1. Uh, x of 1, y 1 be 3 and 5. Let x of 2 and y 2 be this point, 6 and negative 1. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to label my points so I don't get confused. Once again, labeling. Less chance of error. So here we go. We write our formula down. Slope is equal to y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Let's plug in. What is my y sub 2 value? Negative 1. What is my y sub 1 value? Negative 5. What is my x sub 2 value? 6. And what is my x sub 1 value? 3. All right, now I'll go through and do my math again. I have to know my basic math. A negative 1 minus 5, that's going to give me a negative 6. 6 minus 3, that's going to give me 3. A negative 6 divided by 3, that's going to give me a negative 2. So my slope is a negative 2. Now, a couple of things here to point out. They use uh, 3 and 5, and they use 6 and negative 1. Now, what you got to notice is if they pick any point that meet at a crosshair, a crosshair is when the line connects at the point at a perfect center. And you guys that play video games or girls that play video games, you notice there's crosshairs when you play a game like Call of Duty. All right. So, but they could have picked any point like here and they could have picked here. All right. See that any two points would give you the same answer as, as a negative two. All right, now you wouldn't pick, you can also pick, let me see, would this be a good, no, that wouldn't be a good one. All right, now, so, and, and here's a good point. So literally, they can, they can pick this point and this point, still come out with negative two. They can pick this point and this point, still come out with a negative two. They can pick this point and this point, still come out with a negative two. This point and this point, still come out with a negative two. And also, this point and this point, they would still come out with a negative two, all right? Now, to be honest with you, the points in between will work also. It's just that they're harder to figure out because of how the human eye works and how precise things are. Okay, now you can also count the slope. Now, let me show you how you do that. All you're gonna do is count the rise over the run. Now, see, we're going from here to here, from there to there, all right? So, and when you count, you end up making like a little triangle. You notice that? Make a little triangle. All right, here you go. This is how you count. Rise. Now, in this case, we're going downward. Can you see that? We're going down. So, you count going down. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
So your run is a negative six. Excuse me, your rise is a negative six. Once again, one, two, three, four, five, six. Your rise is a negative six because you are going down. All right, now let's do the run. The run is going to be one, two, three. That's a positive three because you're going in a positive direction on the x-axis. So negative six over three. That's equal to a negative two. All right, that's how you would do that. All right, now you can also count the slope going in the other direction. Let's go up first. If we go up first, we'll come out with one, two, three, four, five, six. Now that's a positive six. All right. That's going to be a positive six over. Let me count it again. One, two, three, four, five, six over one, two, three. Now that's X and we're going in the negative direction. So that's a negative three. All right. So now what's a positive six divided by a negative three? Negative two. Do you see how I still have an answer of a negative two? Example three, find the slope of a horizontal line. Find the slope of the line shown. Let x1, y1 equal negative four, negative two and four. So negative two and four. And let x2 and y2 be four and four. All right, so we do the same thing we did before. We label our points. So we know that x of one, I put that on top, x1, y1, do the same here, y2, excuse me, and this is why you always want to use a pencil when you're doing math because you are going to make mistakes, I don't care how good you are. So um, this is going to be x2 and y2. All right, so we got everything labeled, we write our formula down, then we plug in. What's the y2 value? 4. What's the y1 value? 4. What's the x2 value? 4. What's the x1 value? Negative 2. We do our math. 4 minus 4, that's 0. All right. Uh, a negative 4 minus 2, that means a negative times a negative, so that's a positive. So we're really saying 4 plus 2. So that's going to be 6. And we end up with 0 to 6. What's 0 divided by 6? That's going to be 0. So then the slope of a horizontal line, and by the way, the slope of all horizontal lines are always going to be zero. Why is that? Because the y value stays the same. The y value stays the same. And they end up subtracting each other. And notice on this horizontal line, the y value is always four. So if you go here, the y value is four. 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 Y value is 4, Y value is 4, 4. So you're always going to end up saying 4 minus 4. So even if you got a line going like right here, see? That line was coming through just like that, right? That's a horizontal line. So, and I know my line here is my Y value is always going to be 1, it's always going to be 2. So when I compute, I'm going to end up saying 2 minus 2. Like I said here, 4 minus 4. So 2 minus 2 is 0. So once again, my slope is going to be zero over whatever I vet, whatever, whatever value I figured out for, for the, um, for the run, for the X. Example four, find the slope of a vertical line. Find the slope of the line shown. Let X1, Y1 equal three, five. That's this case. And let X sub two, Y sub two equal three, one. That's this case. All right. We do the usual. We plug in and we label our values. Okay, after labeling, we plug in. What's the Y2 value? 1. What's the Y1 value? 5. What's the X2 value? 3. What's the X1 value? 3. And notice for a vertical line, your X values are always the same. See here, it's coming through at 3. And no matter where you come down this line, X is 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Doesn't matter. So you end up with 1 minus 5, which is 4. Excuse me, 1 minus 5 is a negative 4. And then what's 3 minus 3? 3 minus 3 is going to be 0. Well, anything divided by 0 is undefined. Don't believe me? Put in your calculator right now and try to divide, try to divide a negative 4 by 0. You'll come out with error.